Hello and welcome back and today I want to look at the software that you get with your SimCam S1 smart AI powered IP camera. Now that was quite a sentence wasn't it? Now I've already been playing with this app for the best part of about four hours and I'm going to be doing some long term testing with this in conjunction with a network attached storage device very soon. But Today I want to show you guys the application, what it can do, what it can't do, and how it integrates with the camera itself. I'm recording now in the usual studio, but the camera I have reset to default to set it up for the very first time to show you guys how easy it is or how easy it isn't. Let's have a quick look. Now, the application you're going to need to utilize is known as the SimCam app. It's available for iOS and Android, and we are using the S1 today. So the application is there, the green one there in the middle. So we're going to click that. And I've already opened up the application, as you can see here on screen. Now, there's lots of options here at the bottom with regards to recordings and libraries. And I have already installed a 16 gig SD card in the camera as well. So let's set about adding a camera here. We click the plus symbol at the top and the device recommends that we hold the reset button for five seconds to begin the installation of this camera. I've already done that prior to this recording. So after this, I'm going to say that I've already done that and then click next. It's then asking you to enter the credentials for the Wi-Fi area that you are in. You can select one of the Wi-Fi protocols in your localized area. And then from there, enter the Wi-Fi password, which I've done. From there, it will then give you a QR code that you need to show to the camera, which felt very counterintuitive at first, but when you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. Because normally when you get a QR code, you're working the other way around with your phone scanning the code. But for now, I'm just going to put this code up to the camera. So I don't know if you heard that there in the background. I had to quickly get off the chair there. It is now going to establish connection with the Wi-Fi credentials that I've issued to the device via the 3D barcode. This will help the camera find my internet connection or my local network, so to speak, and establish a connection. So next, I prick the ne next option. And in the background, the camera is now going to start getting itself ready in the background to be initialized with my camera. And as you can see there, there I am. And there on screen will be there's the camera in the background there and we can click play and get live uh, recording right now now hopefully i've disabled a lot of the audio notifications here which will stop a feedback loop but i do apologize if something like that happens in the past if i look up to the camera now we can see that we can do a quick test of just how good the fidelity is and the latency right now so i'm going to do some quick clicks So around about a second delay there, which isn't too shabby for a network camera, I've got to say. And now we can talk a little bit about the options inside this camera. So for now, we can go into the settings menu here. And the settings are pretty good for the entire camera. We can see how long we want alert uh, recordings to be, so we can adapt those. But let's go to the top. First, we can rename the camera if we so choose. So we'll give that a quick rename there. Device settings are when we can actually change a lot of the recording quality and picture quality of the camera that we're utilizing and we can enable a number there's a camera talking in the background we can do a number of settings here that will change how the camera reacts to certain uh, alerts so for example we're going to disable mute for now because we don't want that feedback loop loop of a recording of my audio being played back and a recording into the mic but there's lots of other options there along the way too we can change the recording format there, which is pretty nice. A lot of cameras don't give you that option off the bat. And we can say how and when we want the camera to function at any given time. After that, we can look at camera information, which tells us more about it. And if we want to stream the camera and connect it to other devices. And I will be doing some NAS testing in the next video too. After that, we can adjust the recording duration. I'm going to go with 30 seconds. And then after that, we can look at some of the more interesting settings with the AI detection. So with AI detection, you can say whether you want this camera to recognize people in a monitored area or the, or the entire monitored screen that the camera can see at any given time. We're going to go through those settings later on, but for now we're going to enable that pet detection that will notify you when animals go into a certain field of view, as well as vehicle detection about, you know, obviously based on different vehicles, thanks to the AI algorithm. 
and we can also see uh, if we want to change the zone recording area of this camera. So right now I'm still talking and there's that one second delay, but what we can do is decide where we want the camera to record. On the right hand side of the screen here, there's not much to worry about. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create an area of recording. We're going to click here, 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 and here. We can create another one and create a completely bespoke recording environment where only this area will be recorded and we can adjust these very very easily so now i've created that zonal area of recording space there in where my face was but of course more likely you're going to be going for windows and doors and stuff like that on top of that you can have a look at the different monitoring areas or you can change zonal recording for different cameras so right now it's already started recognizing the people which is the green box and blue which is the face and right now we're going to be using that later on to assess some of the recordings that this camera is going to give us now if i move out of this recording area say leaning here it's still recording me but i'm not in the recording box but as soon as i turn to camera it's still going to clock my face there so We'll come out of there, we're analysing what we can see. So those are the AI detection settings, but now we can go to facial recognition. Now, I've already entered my face in this device. So for now, we can say that these four pictures which it asks me to enter show who I am. Now, I have two options if I want to add a new person. I can either take brand new pictures of my face and upload it to the camera so it knows who I am and therefore can cross-reference it with the AI algorithm, or I can upload pictures directly from my phone if I so choose. So for now, let's create a brand new picture. Firstly, it's going to ask me to take pictures that are just like the ones below. So for now, I'm going to go with the one of my direct face. Then one slightly up. Then one to the side, and one to the other side. And there you have it. We can now enter that as a second person if we so choose. And right now that is still me and I've updated the pictures of me on there. But we can add as many people as we want for this device. But obviously the more people you add the harder things are going to be and there are some subscription services based in the background of this device now in playback we're able to see any recordings that we've made had any of those alerts that we've set up actually caused triggers so we can see there in that field there the recordings of the alerts right there but obviously during playback this isn't an optimal way to go through different results because you don't want to see the entire history of the recording pattern you just want the alerts which is what we're going to talk about in just a moment now leds on the camera can be be activated and deactivated as well as time zone recordings for both the recording uh, saved files and for timestamps on the uh, screen Firmware updates, obviously available for this camera from time to time, and I've already got the latest firmware pre-installed. Moving forward, we can talk about NAS hard disk configurations, and this is where, if you want to direct um, traffic to a NAS on the local server, so in my case, 192.168.1.102 slash public. This is a QNAP that I have in the local area. We can then set it up that this NAS, if we uh, this camera can save directly to a NAS shared folder, something that is surprisingly simple but often not available on IP cameras because brands don't like to get people. A lot of way IP camera companies make money is with their third party subscription cloud services, and a lot of the time that's where the real money is for the brand, hence why they give away a lot of these cameras at a snip 20 30 dollars. This camera, on the other hand, gives you the ability to use an SD card, it allows you to use NAS storage, and it allows you to use cloud storage too. So there's lots of options there. So those are the setting options of the camera as we see in real time. Now we're looking at that preview window, we can see the recording area and we can see the alert in real time. Next, we can switch the detecting mode on and have a look at what the camera is doing right now 
in terms of detecting me. We can look at the alerts and we can see how it's, if it's detected people or it's detected motion. And as we can see during the course of the video earlier on, we have got all of those alerts. Some of them from earlier on when I was setting up the camera for the first time and others during the course of this recording. If we come out of there, we can look at the library and the library will be pre-recorded footage if we so chose for the camera to be on for a certain period of time. But alerts obviously respond to the alerts that we've created during the triggers we set up. So right now we are getting it that we can see this triggered alert window. And right now it's going to show us exactly what was happening there on screen. I am using screen recording capture software right now so it can play its part on uh, performance of the GPU of my mobile device. We can also download these files locally onto our phone or device if we so choose. And as you can see, we're getting push notifications too in real time from the camera when it notices something has changed. Back here at the main menu, we can head over to the settings of the individual app to see some of the configuration options from this side. We can look at the account that we've set up with the device and learn more information about our subscription service or if we want to utilize the device in far more bespoke fashions within our close-knit environment. So you've got employees or family members, the setup for you may be very, very different. The assistance option at the top can be configured and a lot of the time this is so you can configure it to call um, police and security services if you so choose. But remember this is not an automated feature and something you will have to trigger manually. We can also select different cameras to double check the facial recognition settings just like we were doing on the camera. So we don't have to log directly into the camera to see that. On top of that we can find out more information directly from the app without going into the camera based on what it was showing you before. Safety verifications that you can do can make sure that even though a person could have your phone and access, you can make sure that the phone can only be accessed with additional fingerprint security or gestures. So it's another extra layer of protection between the cameras in your home or business environment and anyone that manages to steal your phone. As talked about in my hardware review, this camera is also supported in an Amazon Alexa, Google Home, and utilizing If This Then That, or IFTTT, to create your perfect smart home environment with the camera. Now, for the most part, I'm pretty sure this might be one of the best IP cameras that I've utilized here on the channel. Largely because at its price point and its smart features, I can't help but be impressed by what it delivers. I have talked about a lot of cameras from a lot of different brands. And overall, this has been one that's given me the most smart options at the most affordable price. It's not perfect. It doesn't have, for example, the kind of pan, tilt, zoom options that I would like in an IP camera. The controls of pan, tilt, zoom are largely um, guided by the AI itself, by movement around the room. We can move the camera around to different settings and we can rotate the camera to a lesser degree, but for the most part, it, this whole system is automated. So if we deactivate a lot of what we've done, we will then be able to delete that. Let's get rid of the box that we created. We can then choose to um, disable that recording area that we were using earlier. So right now, I would say in terms of camera use, if you're going to take advantage of a smart camera and smart object monitoring, so for example, we're going to monitor this laptop right here, we can set it up that this camera only clocks this item. And if this item is moved, then it will trigger an alert, which is quite cool if you don't want things to go missing or if you're monitoring an area where you don't want things to go, such as on your uh, pavement outside your home or if you want to know on your doorstep if a parcel arrives. So right now, if we switch back to the live view, I'll move the camera, uh, move the laptop away from that recorded area. We'll move items out of that field and from here, the alert is now triggering and moving as I move too. Now, so for now, we can then move around and the camera will follow my movement as I travel. So the pan, tilt, zoom is an automated feature and it will track me around the room. And in terms of alerts, it will then also do those alerts about things that have moved. 
The lack of pan tilt zoom is a little bit disappointing. The fact that the device does have this on an automated background setting is of course always welcome. But for me personally, I will always appreciate a system that I can both control and has an automated control built in. I would rather have both options than be forced to choose one or the other. But with that exception, this is a very easy camera to set up. It is an intelligent camera that arrives at about 100 quid, which is pretty good. And if this camera does work as well as this when I connect it to a couple of NAS devices after this video, I will be impressed. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Do stay tuned for part three of my SimCam S1 video. And do click like if you enjoyed this. Click subscribe to learn more about IP cameras. And I will see you next time.